Okay, this is your Stat Sensei, Mr. Spensei, and we're going to do some more work with errors. And in this video, we're going to focus on the relationship between alpha, beta, and power and try to uh, show how that relationship and, uh, works and try to clear up any confusions that might occur. So once again, type one error, the probability of rejecting the null, given that the null is true, this is a conditional probability and it's measured by alpha, all right? A type one error cannot be committed if the null is not rejected. A type one error may have been commit, committed if it is rejected, but only if the null is true. And by the way, if you reject, the only type of error you can commit is a type one. A type two error is a probability of accepting the null given that the null is in fact false. Once again, there's a given statement, and because it's given, it's a conditional probability. Once again, this is measured by beta. This is measured by alpha. All right. Type 2 error cannot uh, be committed if the null is rejected. The only type that can, error that can be committed if the null is rejected is type 1. A type 2 error may have been committed if the null is not rejected, but only if the null is false. All right, and once again, power of the test is one minus beta and represents the probability of rejecting the null given that the, it is false. In other words, this is a correct decision. We rejected and it was correct. So power of the test is the probability of correctly rejecting. So this diagram kind of shows the relationship. All right, I used to have students memorize this but I didn't find that it helped that substantially. It helped some, but it didn't do everything I wanted it to do. But if I push this bar off to the right, so I push it off to the right, we can see that alpha gets smaller. And as I push it this way, we can also see that beta gets bigger. However, when I look at alpha and beta, if I add those together, they do not equal one whole normal curve. So there's not a, um, a formula to bring those two together. If I know alpha, I don't know what beta is, but I know that if I decrease alpha, so if I decrease alpha, beta goes up. We also know that as I decrease alpha, power goes down, all right? On the other hand, if I push in the other direction, if I push in the other direction, alpha is going up. And if alpha is going up, beta is going down. And power is also going up. You need to make sure that you have those relationship directions understood. So they, alpha and beta move in top opposite directions, and power moves with alpha, okay, in the same direction as alpha. So as alpha increases, beta decreases and power increases. We're more likely to reject the null, more likely to commit a type one error, and less likely to commit a type two. These are your consequences. As alpha decreases, as alpha decreases or gets smaller, beta increases and power decreases. Less likely to reject the null, less likely to commit a type one error, more likely to commit a type two error. So here's kind of a forced context of this. A teacher, let's just say it's your stat sensei, claims that the test average was 70%. But you believe the true figure is lower because you have too many friends that made a 40 or whatever. So you gather a simple random sample and will reject the claim if in your sample the test average is 65% or less. So basically you said, you know what? Mr. Spencer is claiming that it's 70. However, if I get an X bar less than or equal to 65, I'm not gonna believe it, all right? Because you're not gonna run a straight up hypothesis test. So this is what Mr. Spencer is claiming. I'm claiming my mu, the population mean is 70%, and you've decided that you're gonna reject if it's less than 65. Well, this area right here, the rejection zone is your alpha. And you predetermined it. You didn't calculate it. You just said, you know what? I'm not going to believe them if the average is 65 or less. 
Well, it turns out the test average was actually 60. And notice the 60s line up, all right? So this is the actual truth. So really you should be rejecting this because, because 60 is the truth, that means this is false and we should be believing that 70, all right? That's what we should ha happen. We should be believing that 70. But you take a sample and if you get above a 65, you're not gonna reject my claim, all right? And that would be failing to reject, all right? If you fail to reject, that's a type two. So this is my type two error category. This area down here, below that is power. And power is correctly rejecting. And in this case, you should be rejecting. And remember power equals one minus beta. And we can see that this is the area under the curve is one and one minus beta gives us our power. So the upper graph, shows a null hypothesis model with the claim that the mu is 70 and the plan to reject. When we fail to reject, when will we fail to reject? Well, we'll fail to reject if we get an average greater than 65. This would be a type two error because we know the actual average is 60. When, we, when will we rightly, um, the next thing is, when will we rightly conclude that the null hypothesis is incorrect? We'll rightly conclude that if we get a sample average of 65 and lower, all right? We will rightly conclude, uh, we will co co correctly reject the null hypothesis for any sample with six average less than 65. And that is our power, okay? All right, um, please note, power has a different value for different possible correct values of the population parameter, choosing a smaller, uh, alpha results and higher risk of committing type two error. And this right here, I have not said yet, so put a huge big star by it. The greater the distance between the null and the true uh, value of the population, the smaller the risk of committing a type two error and the greater the power, all right? The smaller the distance between the null and the true value of the population, the smaller the risk of committing a type two error. In other words, if we look at our formula of T equals X bar minus mu over S divided by the square root of N, this is our claimed null. And as this distance, as this distance gets bigger, it's easier to reject. And as it's easier to reject, the probability of a type two error goes down. All right, thank you for watching. The, after this, we are going to uh, work with some type one and type two errors using some AP problems. I hope you'll stick around for those videos. Thank